I just started pouring. That banana tree, it just started pouring. Bananas, green bananas. Hey, y'all, welcome back to my channel. So, I didn't think I was going to record today, <clears throat> but I'm kind of in the mood to talk real quick. So, yes, um. I've been wanting to tell y'all a story. Since I'm in the mood to talk, I'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all about, goodness gracious, about the sickness <laughs> that I endured getting here. Um, and I didn't actually mean to say it like that, but that's exactly what happened. Like, I endured sickness, purging, cleansing of my body look at these trees oh my goodness lord have mercy it's so beautiful sometimes the stuff that just always be there it's like you notice it and it's just so beautiful to you so anywho <clears throat> let me tell you all about this story because i've been trying to trying to tell you guys about what happened but like i have not been ready i have not been ready to like rehat rehash or relive that experience so i told you guys in one of my first vlogs that when i was preparing for our move like the day before or maybe if it was it was either the day yeah the day before it was like saturday went to my mom's house got some food from a place that i shouldn't have got some food from let me take my hair down got some food from a place i shouldn't have got some food from and got sick all right i got sick with what i'm going to say is food poisoning because it had to be <laughs> it was just bad right so i got sick and y'all know as i told y'all i recorded myself and everything i didn't feel like it was a pretty moment but it was very real very raw very honest that i was not feeling good i had been throwing up <clears throat> look i had been up chucking <laughs> multiple times i was literally if you know you know dc maryland you know bw parkway is a long little dark place when you're driving it at night i'm driving bw parkway i felt the come up i had to get bw parkway got a side <laughs> strip that's like this big just barely enough room for your car and your door to open up partly and you know at night people are zooming zooming down the road Y'all, I'm in on BW Parkway, letting it all out, all right? On my car door, on the inside of my door, on my pants, I'm letting it all out. <clears throat> but I knew because I was already throwing up at my mom's house that it would come and go. It just kept coming and going. Every time I thought it was over, oh, I feel better, I feel better. Typical. No, it comes right back. <laughs> So, <clears throat> you know, I told you guys in our video, um, I recorded myself the next day after I had got some rest that night and, and all of that stuff. And I was still feeling kind of, I was feeling weak. I also recorded when we got to the airport and I had my son, you know, I'm here solo with my son. So I'm pushing, pushing him around to the airport. And you know, if you, if you fly, you know, security, you know, security can be a lot you got to take shoes off you got to do this so add a stroller like three i would say like two bags one being a thick ass baby bag one being my computer laptop all that stuff like tablets and everything and whatever lithium batteries didn't even know about that kind of things um inside that bag because i didn't know you couldn't keep them in the carrier um in the check baggage so I had a bunch of stuff <laughs> stuffed 
right? Plus blankets because I didn't know if the airline was going to be super quality and give you covers or sheets to sleep with or what. You know, sometimes the plane can get quite cold <clears throat> at night. So I had all this stuff on me. I got my son. I got myself. And I'm trying to get through security, y'all. I was so hot. Once we got through security, I was very happy. <laughs> so then I got, you know, to pushing us and trying to figure out where we go to get our flight. Y'all, I just remember it being so long. And because it was a night flight, most people were taking the plane that I was taking, taking the same flight, taking the same airline, um, for the most part. And we were all going in the same, like, vicinity of the airport. Y'all, like, every time somebody would go, like, in my direction, they would end up taking the elevator up. And I would have to take the what? <laughs> the No, I'm sorry. They would take the escalator. And I would have to take the elevator because I got a stroller and bags. My son is going off. He's cranky. He's tired. I'm cranky. I'm tired at this point. And I'm still feeling really... I'm, I'm not feeling sick like I got to throw up. But I was feeling like... Weak. Really weak. Mind you, because I was sick... Anytime you have food poisoning or you're sick, the last thing you want to do is do anything but drink maybe water. And I was drinking coconut water for hours on end. Since I had gotten home, it was nothing but essential water and coconut water. That was it. Just trying to cleanse my system and balance out my gut. So I didn't eat nothing. I didn't want to eat nothing. What am I going to eat? <laughs> you know what I mean? After I just ate that, mm -mm, I don't want to eat nothing. So let me get to the, to the crazy madness that occurred. <laughs> I told y'all all of that um, just to kind of give you the backstory of what I recorded for you in that first video, our big move. I'm going to link it up top, our big move to Costa Rica. So we get on the plane finally. Mind you, while I'm sitting there, the, the flight is at 2 a.m. I'm sitting there. My son, he's reached his restless point, y'all. He's at that point where he's like ready to run around. It's other children out. They're kind of doing the same thing. You know, he's running, climbing over seats. It's one o'clock in the morning. My son is climbing over seats. He would normally be asleep in any like normal circumstance, but this is not normal, right? <laughs> so he's everywhere. I'm chasing him down, y'all. I'm hot because I got on clothes that I think are fitting for a cold airplane. And he's got on a sweatsuit and he's just roaming, 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 moving climbing, doing all kinds of things. And this flight got people, like it's lots of people sitting waiting for the flight, right? Waiting to board. So I gotta go around, I gotta go through, I gotta go over. Y'all, I was so tired. Eventually I end up filling up our water bottles with some water that was there in the airport. And I'm chucking it down because I'm so, I'm feeling dehydrated. I felt dehydrated. like. You know, sometimes like you don't know what the feeling is and you're, like your mind just tells you you're dehydrated. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, my neighbors. So, yeah, I felt like dehydrated. That's, that's what's happening with my body. So I'm just chucking water down, chucking water down. Y'all, we get on the plane, my son is going off. Why? Because he's tired. Showed you guys that in the video, right? He's tired. He's restless. He's like, what the heck is going on? Where are we? This is not normal. Y'all, I finally got my son to settle down because they, they were like, oh, um, you know, basically not saying it like we don't usually do this, but they basically were like, hey, I know the plane hasn't pulled off yet, but let me know if you want um, to, you know, us to get you something for your son. Like we have some apple juice and we have some um yogurt bars and stuff i think i showed y'all that already in the video so he's eating he's calm the stuff is sweet he's calm he goes to sleep because of course the plane takes off we're in the air the lights come down it's feeling good i'm like okay i lay down we got a whole row to ourselves my son is laying down his feet are pretty much propped up on my lap and I'm just rubbing his back, making sure that he's comfortable and cozy. And he looks like he's really set off into his sleep. Y'all, I lay down, try to get comfortable in the two seats that I have. Because, again, we have a three-seater row to ourselves. I lay down. Of course, I'm peeking at him, make sure he's, he's okay. I lay down, y'all. I kid you not. I remember hearing whispers of the stewardess. At the, what is, are they called stewardess? 
yeah, stewardess, stewardess, I can't remember. You know what I mean, the people who work the flight, they give you food and make sure you're good. Um, <clears throat> the stewardess, um, I heard mumbles, you know, like basically them speaking quietly and I realized that they were going around with a food cart at like what time in the morning, I don't know, <laughs> like at three in the morning or two in the morning or whatever time it was. Um, and they were going and asking people, do you want chicken sandwich or do you want this? And they were just whispering. And all of a sudden, it hit me. Oh, <laughs> you got to throw up. <laughs> like, y'all, it hit me so hard. Like, you got to throw up. You got to, something is coming out, right? Something's getting ready to come up and out. Y'all, as they got closer to me, because it hit me so quickly, they were like at the seat, two seats be, um, in front of me. So I tapped on the lady, I tapped on her back or her arm or something, and she looked back and I was like, Banyo, Banyo. <laughs> like, and I said, Mi hijo, my son, my son. And she's like, go, 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 I have him, it's okay, I got him, no worries. I shot off to the bathroom. Y'all, when I got to the bathroom, all I remember, and I'm gonna let y'all know right now, I'm gonna get graphic with this story, I'm gonna tell y'all exactly what it was and how it happened. So if you a man watching this video, I'm sorry if this is TMI, but women, we all, yeah, like, I'm going to be honest with y'all and tell y'all how this happened. Just an alert. <laughs> I get to the bathroom. I feel like I got to throw up. I'm like, okay. Then I feel like I have to, shit, I have to use the bathroom, right? Because, of course, I'm purging. This is just what it's been. Y'all, I sit down on the toilet. I'm like, okay. I can't go. I'm feeling dizzy like this on the plane. Don't know what it is, but I'm just feeling like that sensation where your whole body just feels light. Like everything feels like the hairs are standing up on your body. Like your head is light and dizzy. Like shit is almost about to get real. Just feels that sensation over my body. I'm like, okay, I can't use the bathroom. I don't know what's happening. All right. So I wipe myself. I think I peed or something. I wipe myself. Y'all, I wipe myself. Look at the tissue because, of course, the bathroom is like a box on the plane. It's, it's tight, small. Look at the tissue before I throw it in the toilet. What do I see? Red. I see blood. My period started. Y'all, it explains why I was sweating so hard. It explains why I felt extra dizzy all of a sudden after having rested throughout the day. And even though, yes, getting prepared to actually leave for the airport and getting to the airport was a lot on my body, I and getting through the airport was a lot on my body, I still was like, why am I feeling like this? And why is it hitting me so suddenly? So when I saw the red, it explained it. Like, my period, you know? This shit, I know. I know. This has a, a big part in, in why I'm feeling this way. So anywho, y'all, all I know, I'll tell you how it happened. I get up, see red, see the blood. Oh, sh I'm on my period. That's all I remember. <laughs> Y'all, that's all I remember. I saw it. That's all I remember. <laughs> Shit got black. Shit went black. Okay. Next thing you know it, I wake up on the ground, flat on the ground, on my back, on the ground. Woman over top of me, her voice is sounding like it's coming from a distance. Ma'am, are you okay? Ma'am, are you okay? Ma'am, you fainted. Are you okay? Can you hear me? I'm coming too. If you ever fainted, you know. I'm coming too. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? Ma'am, you fainted and you hit your head. Are you okay? Do you know where you are? Where are you going? Costa Rica, San Jose, Costa Rica. I had the weakest voice. My body was so weak, my arm, oh, my arm, my arm, y'all. Like, I felt like somebody, somebody, like, jabbed me in the back of the head and pushed me into a brick wall. Like, I felt like my arm was about to fall off. Like, it was so painful, and the back of my head was throbbing, y'all. When I tell you, I was just happy that I could think straight, <laughs> but I couldn't. Like my body was so weak that I couldn't, I couldn't 
you know, get it out. Like I couldn't say what was happening. I couldn't, you know, I, like I could say San Jose, Costa Rica. Like I knew where I was going. I was thinking, but I, it just my body was too weak to actually do the actions. So she picked me up, y'all. Y'all. <laughs> my pants were down at my freaking knees when she picked me up. My pants were down. Pants and underwear were down at my freaking knees. I could not make this story up. She picked me up and helped me pull my pants up. I was like, what the f is going on? Why are my pants down? Mind you, it's dark on the plane, thank God. It was like one other person back there helping her help me. I was so embarrassed, but again, my body was too weak to even really react or adjust. I couldn't even pull my own pants up. She had to help me pull my pants up, y'all, from the backside. Oh, it was, it was so embarrassing. And yet, I'm so grateful for her. <laughs> Cause she showed no, she showed nothing but tenderness and care for me, like in that moment and just being a nurturer for me in that moment, helping me do what I got to do. Same thing I would do with anybody, to be honest with you. Like none of that sh matters. Like it doesn't matter what happened. I'm just going to help you in this moment because you need help. She helped me pull my pants up y'all. And mind you, I knew I was on my period. So I was even more embarrassed and upset because I'm on my period like how long I've been on the floor like am I bleeding like what the hell you know what I mean so anyway she sits me down in one of the stewardess seats where they sit and they buckle up when the plane is is you know in flight mode or whatever um she sits me down and she says ma'am she says you know do you know what's wrong with you and I said I had food poisoning and mind you y'all whole time I'm like this I'm like this like I could barely keep my head up. I felt like I was gonna faint again. I felt so dizzy and so weak. I'm there in the seat. She's asking me these questions. I'm trying to I'm trying my best to answer her questions. Again, I knew what I was trying to say, but I couldn't artic I couldn't get my body to get the action out like I wanted to. So I said I had food poisoning. She's like, okay, okay, I got it. Have you eaten anything? No. Ma'am, I really want you to eat something. Maybe something with sugar. Okay. She got me apple juice. Cookies. Same thing they got my son. <laughs> when we got on the plane. She gave me that. Apple juice ain't never taste so good. <laughs> apple juice ain't never taste so good. <laughs> I'm kid I kid you not. Apple juice and them damn yogurt cookies, which I would never normally eat, but like were so good just to have that sugar go into my body. I felt like slowly coming into balance, I guess you can say, like slowly coming back into myself where I was able to like move regular and not be so woozy. She gave me that. She said, sit here as long as you need. And I kind of jumped. I was like, my son, because I was already saying my son, but like mind you I'm drinking and I'm eating so I'm, I'm able to like now get it together and I'm like my son she's like he's okay he's still sleeping he's okay <sighs> y'all my heart my heart just thinking about him like how long was I passed out how long has he been there in the seat by himself like <sighs> it was a lot anywho she told me he was okay again she has such a nurturing spirit and I just I'm so grateful for her I have no idea who she is Maybe I'll go back and put in a note to Avianca, tell them when my flight was and what happened and just let them know like this lady, whoever she was, I just know it was a lady. <laughs> she was so freaking kind to me, so nurturing. So when she said he was okay, I trusted that he was. Um, after like five minutes, she came back to check on me and she was like, are you okay? She was like, I'm gonna help you walk back to your seat. I said, okay. So she helped me walk back to my seat. She said, would you like more crackers before? I said, sure. So she got more crackers. She walked me back to my seat. My son was there. He didn't move an inch. He was fine. He was laying there sleeping on the plane. Thank goodness. Made me feel so good to just be by his side again. And I sat down and I got comfortable and she gave me more crackers and another apple juice. And I ate that. <laughs> right through the day I ate it <laughs> I was like yeah I need this I need all of this <laughs> thank you I kept saying thank you so much thank you so much and 
basically, I started to lay down after I finished my crackers and stuff. I laid down. Same thing I did before I felt like the urge to, to, to you know. I laid down. And y'all, I hopped up so fast. I was like, oh. <laughs> Do I got a concussion? Because my hair hurt. <laughs> I ain't going to sleep. I don't care. I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> y'all, I literally sat there for like... <clears throat> For like 10 minutes just contemplating should I sleep because I was so tired. But I didn't want to I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go like that. You know they say if you go to sleep with a concussion, you may not wake up. So I was like, nah, mm -mm. <laughs> I want to make it to Costa Rica. <laughs> right? So <laughs> all I know is I went to sleep. <laughs> I say I'm gonna put it in your hands because I'm tired. <laughs> if the universe intends for me to wake up, I will wake up. And I woke up, obviously, I'm here today. But that sleep was needed, that apple juice and them cookies were needed, that lady, that help was needed, y'all. I'm telling you, like, the heart, the heart of people, the heart of, of, you know, the universe to give you what you need, like, when you need it. I needed that. In that moment, I needed all of that. You know, normally I'm like, mm, it's got too much added sugar. Mm, I don't like these type of cookies, got all that milk and stuff. <laughs> But, like, in that moment, I needed exactly what they had. And I'm so grateful for them. I'm so grateful for that moment. I'm so grateful to be here today, enjoying all of this rain, <laughs> all this beauty with my son. Y'all, it was not easy getting here. Of course, when I got here, because some reason when I come to Costa Rica, I always come with a stomach ache. Um, and when I get here, it, like goes away like almost instantaneously and it's it's interesting so as i talk to some of the melanated folks here who have come here from the states a lot of them have experienced some of some similar things you know maybe not as drastic as fainting on a plane but throwing up um just purging in different ways cleansing in different ways having skin issues or having things to come out and show through your skin um, like these things really happen to a lot of people and one of the things I can say is like coming from the states like I'm not saying that the states is like the worst place on earth or anything like that but I do believe it's Babylon I do I'm sorry I do believe like the states has some good people and some good people need to get up out of there and bring their gifts and bring their know-how to another place because man the states just don't it ain't serving a lot of people and I think that for those like myself who worked in schools in the inner city and who was spent a lot of time in the inner city, like, yeah, I had my house my or my apartment right outside and it was quite quiet and peaceful. But even around my way, it was getting crazy, you know, prostitution, seeing certain things, seeing a lot of just people in 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 a in a in a mind, in a mindset that just wasn't natural wasn't natural but like the society the system like just takes all of what makes you you and what makes you beautiful and makes you whole and it turns you hard and it turns you cold and it turns you crazy like some crazies okay some crazies like I couldn't even go to the gas station without feeling like I had to lock my doors like or like even going alone at certain gas stations I would avoid because it's like young and like they be coming up to your car <laughs> like they literally and being in the inner cities and having lost some students having seen like five fights like I didn't see them all but knowing that there were like five fights in like five hours like a short day like the toxicity the 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 drama the 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 just being accustomed to and and used to this world like being so hard you know it's like it's not a soft life in the states it is not a soft life you know you can make a lot of money and it still ain't no soft life it's just not and sometimes i get worked up about it thinking about that but a lot of us need that peace of mind you know and so when we come here and you see all this space that you get. You see the space that I have, y'all. Like, I have space. I have space. Space to breathe. Space to think. Space to just be and reflect. Space to let go 
of the chaos, space to let go of the hard, the, it, the hard exterior, you know what I mean? Like to let go of the, the shit that just doesn't serve me, you know? Let it go, you know? A lot of the purging that we have done, including myself with the story I just told you, a lot of that purging had to happen. And one of the melanated gods here told me, she said it in such a beautiful way, like, yeah, it sucks that you had food poisoning, but that was whatever avenue needed for you to purge. That was what you needed to purge a lot of things, because as we all know, especially spiritual folks out there, the shit always starts internally, you know, on a spiritual level, and then it manifests itself in a, on a physical level. So I just wanted to kind of share that story with y'all so I could share that with you guys. Um, and I also just wanted to share it because I don't even think my mom know that story. Like <laughs> I told like a few people, but I was still so traumatized, like so happy to be here, but so traumatized like that that happened. And, you know, just coming to grips with it like that was my purging, you know. So don't be surprised if you are looking to make a move abroad. Do not be surprised if you have your own purging. Especially if you came from like the city or, you know, places like that where it's a lot of energy, a lot of different types of energy. Especially if you come from that and you have grown up in that, like you're going to do some purging when you get to a place like this. It's just going to happen. So anywho, you guys, I hope you all enjoyed the story. I did not make up a lick, a piece, a nothing, a nada in that story. Everything I just said actually absolutely happened. Um, so yeah, it's like, leave me some comments if you ever traveled abroad or if you have moved abroad and you've experienced something crazy like that, tell me about it because I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I'm telling you, I cannot be the only one that that's happened to, you know, something as crazy as that. Um, so yes, you guys, I hope you, um, enjoyed this video today. I will be back probably a lot more calm. <laughs> um, and just share more about my time here in Costa Rica. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys soon. Peace and love.